Part of the interview room here at the American Express. Scotty, thanks for stopping by for a few minutes. You're making your fourth start here in the event, highlighted by a third place finish in 2020, I believe. Does that sound right? Sounds good. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, that said, just some thoughts on being back here to a place that you've had some good success. Yeah, it's a fun tournament for me. Um, it's nice to start the year here in the uh, continental United States. It's a good place to start, and it's a fun event, and um, three good golf courses that are always in great shape and good weather, and it should be a fun week. And you're technically making your fifth start of the season um, with three top tens and a runner-up at Hero unofficially. Uh, just kind of assess the state of your game, how you're feeling as you're heading into the week. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I've been playing solid uh, recently. I've been hitting it really nice and, you know, making some putts. And so hopefully this week I'll hit a little bit better and make a few more putts and, you know, be there towards the end and hopefully get a win. But uh, game feels like it's in a good spot. I feel like I'm trending in the right direction and starting to see some results, which is, which is fun. Okay. And one last question, then we'll open it up for you guys. Coming off a little bit of a break, hopefully some downtime. Were you able to – maybe you didn't do this, but take, take a look back at last year – Last season, I mean, the just looking at your stats, I don't need to tell everybody here. It was obviously an, an amazing 2022. Um, did you ever stop and just kind of think, what in the world was I doing? <laughs> um, I know I was having fun, which was which yeah. is good. Yeah. But no, I, the break was actually pretty short. Between the Bahamas and having to leave for Kapalua, it may have only had three weeks. And my wife and I went on a trip, and then we were out of town for Christmas, so it went by pretty quick. But um, I reflected a, a little bit, but... I don't focus too much on the past or the future. Just try and stay in the present and just keep working at it. Okay. Well, with that, we'll take a few questions. If you just pop your hand up, we have a microphone. We'll get over to you. Larry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, this is a hack question, but go for it anyway. How, are you, how do you feel different as a, as a player than you were a year ago when you were here? Yeah, I've, I feel like I've improved a lot um, since this point last year. I feel like... I've added new things to my game, and I'm continuing to improve at certain aspects that I've been been working on. And like I said, I've I've seen some results now, which is exciting. And um, yeah, I definitely feel like I've improved. So the change is physical, technical things, or is it uh, no, it's the mental just, approach? It's just fine tuning stuff. So I guess you could say it's yeah. physical, just trying to become more consistent. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest thing. I felt like last year was a year where I played. You know, pretty good, consistent golf throughout throughout the season. I maybe only missed a handful of cuts, at the most, and um, you know I was in position to win numerous different tournaments, and yeah. um, which is which is nice. I was going to say, I mean, a lot of guys go on little streaks where they play great for a month or maybe six weeks, but you were there the entire year. Um, that's not something that a lot of people do. Was that just you being uh, mentally strong, or? I'm not sure. I think when you see guys that kind of spend a bit of time at the top of the world rankings, whether it's Rory or John or, you know, probably if you look at the top 10, 15 guys in the world, most of those players are pretty consistent. And that was a, an area where I was trying to improve last year where I was kind of on the outside in looking when we were trying to qualify for the Ryder Cup, I guess, which would have been a year and a half ago, um, and was able to get on that team and, you know, play well and get some confidence. And then I started to improve physically you know, and stuff of my swing. And I think my approach stats last year jumped pretty high. I think I was maybe top five in approach, whereas in years past I was maybe 60th or 70th. Um, I don't know exactly what it was, but it wasn't fifth or something like that. Um, so that was an area that I, it was nice to see improvement. And then when you look at the results from last year, I felt like I played a lot of good golf, which is nice. And I guess that's why you saw me closer to the top of the world rankings versus 20th. Uh, hey, Scotty, you start on uh, looking to Country Club tomorrow, traditionally a place where you guys uh, often go low. D do you uh, game plan differently for looking to Country Club compared to the other two courses at this event? Um, not really. I, th I think every course, you know, is a little bit different, and so you kind of have a game plan for each course no matter where you are, and um, I'll approach a lot of them pretty similar, just trying to hit good shots and, um, you know, make the uh, – the right decisions off the tee. And so La Quinta, there's a few places where you can be aggressive, and then there's a few places where you have to be a little bit more patient off the tee. But if you're in the fairway on that golf course, you're going to have a lot of opportunities. So most importantly, just getting the ball in play and going from there. A couple other guys I talked to mentioned the greens at La Quinta Country Club as being some of the best you see maybe in the course of the year. Do you feel that way? What's your putting experience like at, at La Quinta Country Club? I mean, they may be some of the best like surfaces I've seen ever. 
I mean, they're really, really good, and it's consistent. It's been like that. I think, I think this is my fourth time here at this event, and they've been like that every time I've been over there. It's pretty amazing what that superintendent and the club can do with those greens. And uh, yeah, if you're rolling it good, there, there's a little bit of a pull there. They can be tough to read at times, but once you start making a few putts, that hole can look really big because those greens are are nice. One last one for me, sorry. Um, if Very things good. go a certain way this week, you can regain your spot at, uh, atop the world rankings. Is that something you think about or motivates you? Or No. Um, I don't know what a certain way is this week. I'm focused on trying to put myself in position to win the tournament. I have no idea what a finish okay. or win would do for me in the world rankings. I haven't checked in a while, but I, I know I'm still number two, and number one is better than number two. So... <laughs> um, I don't focus too much on that stuff. I just try and, like I said, I don't focus too much on the past. I don't focus too much on the future. For me, it's always best to stay present and um, continue to work on the things that I've been working on for many, many years. Thank you. Yeah, Rex and then Kevin. Scotty, along those lines, there is a weird scenario this week where you could end up sharing the top spot with Patrick Cantlay, like statistically, which seems odd. It's never happened before. Can you just talk to what that would possibly feel like? And what? In the world ranking, you could both be world number one. That'd be pretty funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I guess uh, I assume that's never happened before. Yeah. It's never happened before. Yeah. It would be a little bit weird to be have two number ones. Maybe we'd have a putt off or something to see who would be the real number one. <laughs> and going back to what you do in the off season, how much do you and Randy kind of dig into the strokes gain stats in between seasons and what was sort of the focus short off season, but this off season? Um, I don't know how well, you know, Randy, but he's not a huge stats guy. He's pretty old school, but it's, um, it's not something that he won't look at. And most of the times the stuff that he sees and the stuff that I feel tends to align with statistics. And so when we come back from events, um, and kind of reflecting on a full season, there's certain stuff that we already kind of know, that we're going to work on. And then some years Randy will look into the stats, other years I'll look into the stats. And you know, we're not super organized with it, but we always have kind of an understanding of where we're at and just kind of going in and trying to improve. But we're definitely not looking at fairway statistics and which side I miss more often, if I miss more left or if I miss more right and stuff like that. It's um, just little things here and there. Kevin. Scotty, I'm starting this year. Q School is going back to five and ties. are going to get PGA Tour cards. What is your take on that? And do you think it would change your Q School approach from back in the day, knowing that that's a scenario? Well, I don't know if it would have changed my approach. Um, it definitely would have encouraged me to move further up the leaderboard. And I definitely got a little conservative in the last round. And I kind of had to skate by there at the last second. Um, so it may have helped me at the time to get to the Corn Ferry Tour. I don't know if it would help me to get to the PGA Tour, but I think it's it's a good opportunity for guys. I think it's 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 something that you deserve. After I mean, it's pretty grueling to go through Q School, especially when you start at first stage like I did. It's it's a long few months, and it's I think it's good to give the guys a reward there at the end. And um, yeah, I think it's I think more more opportunities for guys to get out here. Is, is better because you want to reward good golf wherever it is. And if it's at Q School or on the Corn Ferry Tour or PGA Tour Canada, Latin America, wherever it is, you want to reward good golf. And um, so I think that's a, a nice improvement by the tour to start giving spots again to the PGA Tour. And um, I saw in some junior leaderboards from back in the day, you and Chandler Phillips, were, what do you remember about him from kind of growing up in junior golf? Chandler was always, a, I mean, he's an East Texas guy. I've known Chandler for a long time. He's you know, super talented. He's a really talented player. And, uh, I'm sure you'll see his name pop up here pretty soon. He just won today. Did he win today? Okay, yeah. Makes sense. He's pretty good. <laughs> so congrats to Chandler. Newsbreaker. Anybody else? Yeah, I forgot that event finishes on a Wednesday now. I was like, he won today. Uh, I noticed you're on the pack this year. Why did you think it was important to be sort of part of the decision-making process now? Um, I think you've seen kind of more players become more involved in stuff with the tour in the past year, I think, you know, with Liv, that, that's kind of an obvious deal that we had to make a few changes in order to improve our tour in a different way. And so for me, having an opportunity to be on the pack and talk with guys across all different levels of our tour, whether it's a guy finishing 100th on the money list or first, um, it's kind of nice to be in the room and have those conversations and figure out what is collectively going to work best for all of us so that this tour can succeed. And, um, you know, I just want to be in a position to help. And so it should be a good year for us on the pack. And we had a good group of guys and hopefully just continue to improve our tour. 
Are they all good? All right, Scotty, you're the best. Thank you. All right, Appreciate thanks, y'all. Hope to see you back here Sunday.